everything. Yeah, well, this horse deserves the best. Where is this fella? Over here. said you done nothing, mister. You're just having a dream. Nightmare, my friend. Drunk or sober, awake or sleep, a nightmare. What the man needs is a cup of your coffee. Sure. What the man needs, Sam, is a good stiff drink. The name's not Sam. It's Smith, Cooper Smith. Samaritan by any other name would be just as good. I know the feeling. That's a good-looking horse you got outside. You interested in selling it? Uh, we've come a long way together, my friend and I. And we got a lot of miles to go. A lot of miles to go and not much money, huh? None at all, as you can, as you can see. Well, maybe I can help you out. Oh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't looking for a handout. I wasn't offering one. If you're moving west and looking to make some money on a move, I got a job for you driving a wagon. Pays three square meals a day and cash to boot. Sonny. Driving four horses on a wagon train is a man-sized job. Now you run inside the church there. Go on, get. Charlie, I've been looking for you. I got something to tell you. I got something to tell you first. The parson's gonna make an announcement. Oh, you can tell him he doesn't have to. Why? Oh, we got a driver. I just hired him. I gotta get back to camp. You can pick him up at the hotel when your horse is ready. His name's Mike. Mike what? Mike Malone. You, you just passed him on the street there. Now, wait a minute, Coop. If I show up at the wagon train with something like that, Mr. Chris would scalp my face, and you know it. Now, just take it easy, Charlie. I did the hiring. I know he don't look so good right now, but I got a hunch after a shave and a bath and a new shirt, he'll be all right. You just get him back to camp. And don't be stopping off at any saloons, or Chris will see to it. You get more in your face scalp. Don't you worry about that. There's not a chance, no, sir. Well, what's wrong with you all of a sudden? You take the pledge? Nope. Just my luck. Wouldn't you know it? They got some kind of blue laws or something in this town, and the saloons don't open on Sunday. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Good for you. Saloons in this town don't open for business on Sunday. It's a pity they don't do, because I could use a little drink for my dry throat. 
Tell you what, friend, you what? help me wake the barkeep and we'll buy ourselves a bottle. Well, I don't think it's a good idea, you know. No? I wouldn't do it. Why? What because it's pretty dangerous here. Uh, disturbing the peace, maybe. Yeah, people all... Yeah? It's them that's disturbing the peace, my friend. Quack, quack! Now see what you've done. Hurry back to camp, Coop says. Don't go near the saloon, Coop says. Ha! Coop? Well, you must be Charlie Wooster. And a... How do you do? How do you do? And a fine how do you do it is, if you ask me. Thank you. Well, Coop ought to be showing up with a new driver before too long. After the driver Charlie found, it'll be interesting to see what Coop brings back this time. I'm afraid none of us knew Thompson turned out to be a thief, Mrs. Holland. <laughs> there was no harm done. What with me hiding the valuables and Julie packing the strong box with rocks. I wished I could have seen the poor man's face when he finally broke it open. <laughs> well, wonderful to have a nice cup of coffee. Is it all right? Oh, yes, uh, it's fine. Fine, Miss Holland. They call it Irish coffee. I thought you'd need it after making your rounds, listening to trouble and complaints. Our people are getting soft. Morning, Ben. Morning, Nora. Mr. Hale. Morning. Duke spotted some ducks in a pond back there. We might have something special for Sunday supper. A nice lad, that. At the risk of seeming a gossipy old woman, there's trouble between Ben and his young bride, Beth. Relax. It's only me, the fellow who married you, remember? I remember. Came after the shotgun. I remember the day Dad gave you that shotgun. He took you hunting. And I was so jealous, I wouldn't eat anything all day long. You jealous of me? You filled a place in his life I never could fill. Well, he gave me something to measure up to. The way you feel about him, the way he feels about you, it's the one thing and the only thing that makes this marriage right. Look, Ben, I know how you... I know how you feel, but it'll change. Do you, Ben? Do you really? Well, let me tell you. I'm never gonna let myself feel anything ever again. Life's much easier that way. That's not life, that's death. Don't think I haven't considered that, too. Your beauties, Ben. Seeing as your little bride has taken a nap, how about you letting me do the cooking for all of us tonight? That's just what I had in mind. I'll rustle up some firewood. I sent that granddaughter of mine for some an hour ago. Oh, that's my fault, Nora. I told her I'd do it. Now, Coop told her Wooster was coming back from town today, so she rode my horse out to meet him. He needs a good run anyway. You're spoiling her something terrible. Well, oh, maybe that's because she reminds me of Beth a couple years back. Julie's a special kind of girl, Nora. And Storm's a special kind of horse. Charlie! Hey, Charlie Wooster! That's Julie Holland. Sure is a sight to see, ain't she? You'll be working for her and Grandma Holland. Charlie, I was I was waiting for you for the pleasure of riding back with you. And ride is what we're gonna do, too. No more racing, you understand? Oh, excuse me, this is Mike Malone, your new driver. Mr. Malone? 
Well, you still have a lot of run left in you, don't you? No, you don't. No more racing and no more betting. Oh, what a shame. I was thinking you were going to try to win your knife back. Women, always trying to take advantage of you. This old pony and me is no match for her and Storm, and she knows it. I was thinking of giving you a head start. How much of a head start? What do you say the count of 10? How about 15? Oh, now who's taking advantage? All right, 15 it is. That counts. Ha, buddy. Ha. I'll wager that horse of yours is a good match for Storm. Well, I'm, I'm traveling light. I can't afford to lose my shirt. Well, sometimes I race for just the sport of it. Are you game? All right. Let's go. Shortcut, that's what I do. Come on, come on. You don't come charging into camp like that unless you're in serious trouble. It was my fault, Mr. Hale. I, I just wasn't thinking. Uh, well, you don't play games on the trail, Julie. Oh, Mr. Chris, this is Mike Malone. Coop hired him to drive for the ladies. Pleasure. You sure Coop hired him? Sure, I'm sure, Mr. Chris. You sure took your sweet time getting back, Charlie. Well, uh, we had a lengthy discussion with the town marshal. Come on, Mike, I'll show you what uh, yeah. Let the man tell his story, Charlie. It was just a little misunderstanding. That's all it was. What kind of misunderstanding? Well, it seems that the town had blue laws, and I had... We had a choice of either five days in jail or... What does he mean, we? I was an innocent bystander. That's all I was. Well, this is most interesting. Would you care to continue? Well, there was a matter of the uh, saloon window we broke, and... Good drivers are hard to find. Ain't they, Coop? Maybe you don't look in the right places. Yes, we did. You ever drive a four up before, Mr. Malone? No, sir. But Mr. Wooster gave me an advance on my salary to pay for the fine in the window. And the, uh, the only way I can pay off the debt is to work it out for you ladies. Mr. Worcester is most generous. We'll get along fine, Michael. I'll help you with that. Uh, just one more thing in case it makes any difference. I have an ironclad rule about drinking to excess on this train. I'm used to ironclad rules. Army? No, but the uh, discipline's just the same. Well, being used to rules and obeying them are two different things, Mr. Moore. I'll do my level best to abide by your rules until I've paid off my debt to the ladies. After that, we'll decide whether I stay or not. Is that fair enough? Uh, well, uh, well, now, I, um, I think I'll start supper. I'm doing duck in the French manner tonight. Come along, Michael. <laughs> I'll tag along and watch you. Maybe I can learn how to make some of them foreign dishes you fellas like so well, huh? With a name like Michael Malone, I'm surprised you haven't a bit of a brogue, my boy. My folks are three generations away from the old son. Somewhere along the way, one of them fell under the spell of a lovely senorita, and I was christened Miguel to keep both grandfathers happy. Are you heading west for business reasons, Mr. Malone, or just to see the country? No, uh, reasons of health. It must be fascinating watching each new group start out, wondering why they're going wherever they're going. There are as many reasons as there are people. Yes, sir. Mr. Chris and me, we get all kinds. Now, you take this bunch here. Some of them got gold fever. Julie there, she's anxious to see her paw. We got to ride herd on her to keep her from running off with Ben's horse. McGill there, he's heading west for his health. But I think Beth has the best reason for turning her back on the east. She's heading home. We'll be there for long, too. I think I'll go to bed. Thank you for the lovely dinner, Nora. Beth. Are you all right? I'm all right. Go back to the others. Beth. 
I'm worried about you. I... You've been looking so... so peaked lately, and I... Well, once we get home, you'll feel like your old self again. I'm never gonna feel like my old self again, Ben. Can't you get that through your head? Now go on back to your friend. for your hands. Oh, don't bother. They'll toughen up. Oh, it's no bother at all. Let me see them. Oh, heavens above. The pay must be something terrible. It's the proud wounds of honest toil. Well, proud they may be, but, but the pay must be something fierce. You're a darling to let me ride him, Michael. He's a marvelous animal. Fit for a night, riding off on some grand and glorious quest. <laughs> you're an incurable romantic. Speaking of quest, you never did tell us where you're going. West. West is an awful big place. Si, chiquita. Es muy grande. You're a strange man, Michael. Full of evasions and mysterious silences. But I'm building a picture of you already. You can speak Spanish can quote Shelley. Your hands are not used to physical labor, and you've a thirst for liquor. I'd say you were trying to forget something. A woman, most likely. Was she very beautiful? Did you love her terribly? Will you stop pestering the man with your silly suppositions? I shall diplomatically change the subject. Would you say that fishing's a safe topic? Because Coop says there's a fine trout stream up ahead. Are you good at fishing, Michael? I haven't fished since I was a small boy. Oh, it's something you never lose the knack for. I'll keep an eye out for some willow poles, but I'm warning you, I don't like touching the worms. <laughs> Well, that makes, uh, that makes two apiece. We can, uh, we can head for home now. Oh, I hate to leave. They're just starting to bite. I thought you were the one uh, in such a hurry to finish this trip. Well, you would be, too, if you hadn't seen your father for ten long years. Come on. You know, there were some that called him fiddle-footed, but I know he just had no heart for home after my mother died was a great love those two had. One man and one woman who, who found it together. And never another love for either of them. You very seldom ever see that. Seeing as you have no particular destination, why don't you come along with us? My father says that Virginia City's a great boom town and, and there's fortunes to be made for all. Only if you have what the Mexicans call buena suerte. You see, they, they know that luck is a lady full of wiles and whims and as fickle as the wind. Has that been your experience with women, then?
Why can't I do something right just once? Don't pawn it. Oh, it seems a shame to sleep away such a night. All the dark and quiet hours, with the stars burning so bright. Tell me, is that, is that Shelley the poet, or, or Julie the girl? You're laughing at me. No. But you are, with indulgent condescension. You have been all day. Michael, thanks for letting me tag along fishing. What's the matter? Oh, uh... You, uh... Just reminded me of something that... took me a long way back. Something awful? Uh... Something my little sister used to say to me when we were... very young. Tell me about her. What was she like? Uh... Thank you. She was, uh, she was the only girl for miles around. She was always trying to get in our games, always following along. Uh, somebody uh, nicknamed her Tagalog. Oh, she had her sweet revenge, though. And suddenly, she was 16 and a tearing beauty. They were all tagging after her. She, uh... She married the boy that nicknamed her Tagalog. That's a lovely story. With a they lived happily ever after ending. No, she, uh... She died. I killed her. Michael. No more questions. Sometimes it's, it's best not to know all the answers. Go to bed, Julie. She's dead. You killed her. No. Do I make myself clear, Father? A normal delivery is impossible. The only chance of saving your sister's life is to take the child. I'll need the permission of a relative. I... I can't get it. How long have you been ordained, Father? Not long, Doctor. But long enough to know I... I can't give my permission. She's dead. <sighs> the baby? Stillborn. You killed her. No. I trusted you to take care of her. Well, I did everything possible. That's not what the doctor says. He told you he wasn't bound by your code. My code. The commandment, thou shalt not kill, is not my code. It's binding on everyone. My sister knew that. What you have killed? The baby died. You sacrificed your sister for a dead child. Oh, for the love of God. Oh, oh, Duke. I was having a nightmare. I'm glad you brought me out of it.
Take more than that to bring you out of it. How do you feel? Like the top of my head's coming off. Mike, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Duke tells me you were too drunk to stand guard duty last night. He had to take your shift. What do you say? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Coop. You're sorry? You figure that makes it all right? It's my fault, Coop. Stay out of this, Julie. Look, if there's a reason, I want to hear it. Well, it's a long story, and there's no point in telling it. But it won't happen again while I'm on this train. That's your gear? Nobody bothers my gear, Coop. Nobody. Now you sound like you're hiding something. I don't think that's any of your business. Look, Mike, I hired you. It's my responsibility for the job you do. In an outfit like this, one weak link can cost a lot of lives. Well, I'll make it easy for you. I'll remove that weak link right now. Easy for you, maybe, but not for us. We've got a lot of rough country to cross before that storm hits. We need every man we have. You'll just have to take my word for it that I had only one bottle. And I don't think there's anything in that bag that would interest you. You'd make it awful hard for a man to understand you, Mike. A man has all he can do to... To understand himself. All right, you got your problems. I got mine. You just gave me your word. I don't think you'll break it again. Thank you. Coop. Coop, it, it's a sickness with him. He's using the wrong kind of medicine. But he sees ghosts. They haunt him. He's just going to have to learn to live with those ghosts, Julie. I'll see you later. Passengers will have to walk down. Keep an eye on Coop. He'll give you the signal to start down. All right, bring that wagon right up in here. I brought you some coffee. You feeling better? Mm, just a little dizzy when I try to sit up. Well, no wonder that was a terrible blow on the head you took. And that was a terrible risk you took. It was a stupid thing you did. Is there any way to thank a man for saving your life? 
would have been better for everybody concerned if you hadn't. That wind's coming up real strong. Better tie the wagons. Well, I'll go and let you get some rest. I want to take a look at Michael's horse. He cut his leg on a rock coming down the slope today, and it's right over the tendon. I want to make sure that it stays clean. Michael set such store by him. And you set great store by Michael, too, don't you, Julie? Is it so plain to everyone? Julie, make sure. Make very sure. Sometimes a man isn't all he seems, I know. It isn't Ben you're speaking of, is it? No, not Ben. Whatever it is you're running away from is running right alongside of you. Nora, I'd rather not talk about it. I'm not a prying woman by nature, but when there's a mystery and a sadness to a man, it's intriguing. Young girls make a dream of it. There's a big difference between the, the dream and the reality. Michael, be gentle when you break her heart. You're making too much of it. Am I? I love her. I don't want to see her hurt. Neither do I. Because I love her too. The way you love anything, warm and young and beautiful. Gerrit, they said, one does not desire the stars. One delights in their splendor. Oh, you know all of the grand words and the great philosophies. But I wonder, Michael, do you know your own heart? I think I'll check my horse before turning in. to do you should let him go Michael you're hurt no I'm all right Michael if, if anything had happened to you Sure is tasty, Miss Mitchell. I taught her how to make it. To hear him talk, you'd think he taught me everything I know. Well, who wasn't kept picking you up when uh, you were learning how to walk? You weren't much more than a youngster yourself, were you? I was 12. He was unbearable. You started to work kind of early, didn't you? Well, I was out on my own uh, oh, two years before that, you know, doing odd jobs. One day, a fellow in uh, town near the ranch, he hired me to chop some kindling. I got all finished, and then he refused to pay me what he had promised. Well, I got real mad and lit into him. It was a slaughter. Good for you. Taught him a lesson, huh? Ben was the one getting slaughtered, Charlie. He didn't have a sense to stay down. Beth's pa came along and stopped the fight. And he didn't say a word. He just stood there, and he looked at this fellow. He looked at the crowd, and they just went away. Well, he looked 
Looked as tall as a mountain standing there that day. Well, anyway, he said to me, uh, boy, you want a job with me? Well, I had uh, visions of breaking Bronx and riding trail herd. And... Well, you know what the job was? Yeah, chopping kindling. Yeah, and riding herd on her. He's still doing it, too. Would you mind asking a lady to dance, Coop? <laughs> Shucks, ma'am. I got two left feet. Besides, that step's too tricky for me. Well, then, you're elected. I haven't, uh, I haven't danced in years. There are four things even a transplanted Irishman never loses a talent for. Fighting, loving, drinking, and dancing. So come along. Nothing tricky about that, Coop. Just a hoedown, if you ask me. I'm asking you, Charlie. Well, come on. I'll make sure of you as a partner for the next one. Mike! Give me a hand here. Help me get out of the wagon. Some rocks try to help Nora's chills. Oh. How's she doing? Poorly. Fever one minute and chills the next. On top of that, she's having trouble getting her breath, too. Coop? Why do these things always happen to nice people? I don't know, Charlie. I don't know. I'll see you later. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you. I have to be on guard duty in a few minutes. You're doing a good job of avoiding me. You're imagining things. Am I? We're together every day. Not like this. Not alone. Not since that night you saw how it was with me. How I feel about you. Julie. No. Let me say what I have to say. Now, maybe I'm being too forward, but, well, I haven't much time, and you said you were leaving us, and I don't know where you're going. I don't know myself yet. Take me with you. Mike, I love you. I've never loved another man, and the way I feel about you, I never will. Never is a long time. Pretty girls like you fall in and out of love like... like trout playing in sun and shadow. I'm not playing games. This is no childish infatuation. It's more like a... a recognition. It's... it's mystical. It, it's as if I've known you before and... and loved you before in some other life. A starry-eyed dreamer with a head full of poetic illusions. You can't fall in, in love with someone you, you don't even know. I know. I know all I need to know. Oh. 
Now, you're very sweet, and I'm very honored that you feel what, what you think you feel for me. Michael, you need someone to help you find your way. Look at me. I, I know what I'm feeling. My, my heart's just bursting with it. And, and once more, I think you love me, too, only something's keeping you from saying it. What's holding you from me? Is it that you're married already? No. Well, then what stands in our way? Is it something you've done? I, I can forgive it, whatever it is. Oh, Michael, listen, I, I know how to make you laugh, and, and we like the same things. I could make you happy. I, I could make you forget it, whatever it is. Julie, this has got to stop. Right here and now. Do not ask me to stop breathing. It'd be easier by far. Maybe you don't love me the way I love you. I, I'm not asking for that. I just want you to know that I'm yours. For as long as you like. Oh, it'd be enough just to be near you, to, to take care of you and to love you. Don't say anything. Not yet. Not until you've thought about it. Look in your heart for the answer. I hope it'll be the right one. I'm a fierce prayer. I can manage, thank you. Let go, let go. I'm not supposed to be carrying heavy things. Where do you want it? Over there. I promised to take care of you, remember? How could I forget it? What's wrong? Just the baby. He moved. Pretty sure it's gonna be a boy, aren't you? It's gotta be a boy. The boy can face the truth about himself better. He'll never hear it from me. Beth, that's all behind you now. It's what's ahead that counts. Judgment day. You're not the only person in the world that ever made a mistake. Tell that to C.M. Harden. So that's it. You're afraid to face your father. Beth, your father thinks the sun rises and sets in you, and you know it. Not anymore. I know him. I knew how he felt when he didn't come after me himself, and he sent you. That was my idea. To save the family honor, where does loyalty to my father end with you, Ben? Well, your mistake was trying to repay it in this way because one day you're going to regret it. Do you regret it? I suppose I should be grateful to you for covering up my mistakes. But I'm not proud of it. It's the worst kind of cowardice. Now, Beth, you took everything I tried to give you and you twisted it around and you threw it in my face. Now, I thought I could come after you and take you back home and take care of you. I thought that would be enough. Well, I was a fool. It's not enough. It's not enough for me. Well, what would be enough for you? Something you can't give. Well, it's a big ranch. I'll try to stay out of your way. It's an empire, and I'm sure you'll get half of it for this little chore. Well, you... If I die at any moment, it will be of curiosity. Don't burn yourself, huh? Now, when I put these covers over your head, I want you to breathe real deep. It's peppermint. However did you find oh. such a thing? I know where to look for it. I missed your supper doing it, too. Now, from what Chris told me, I didn't miss much. Would you like me to get you something to eat? No, thank you, Julie. If her congestion gets any worse during the night, just crush some of these leaves in boiling water. 
Thanks, Coop. I think she'll be all right. Mrs. Mitchell. Ben, where's Ben? I'll get you inside, then I'll find him. If I was an Indian, I could have lifted your scalp real easy. Don't feel bad, Mike. I grew up in this country. Best pa taught me to track game when I was still a kid. What are you doing out here, Ben? Is Nora worse? Mm. I am looking for the answers to some very troublesome questions. You won't find them in a bottle, Ben. I know. I tried. Well, maybe so, but this stuff sure takes the edge off your feelings. Only for a little while. Then you, uh, you wake up with a headache. The questions are still there, so you, you start all over again. You know, the other day my wife said to you, uh, would have been better if you hadn't saved your life. Half-conscious people say things they don't mean and don't remember. She meant it all right. She'd rather be dead than married to me. Rather be dead than look her father in the face. The finest man I ever knew. If there was anybody in the whole world that I would want to be like, I'd want to be like him. But I know why she's scared. He's strong, clean through. Only a man who's known weakness in himself can forgive it and anybody else. Do you understand that? Ben, it's Beth you should be saying these things to. She's your wife. She's the mother of your child. Not mine. It's not mine. I hate to break up your little party, but Mrs. Mitchell's been hurt. You better get back to your wagon, Ben, fast. Mmm. Remarkable restorative, you sure, a good my guts. I don't know what you call it. It's a pet remedy of mine. Boiling water and honey. Up the rebels. A little bit of whiskey, too. As is a es, exposición de niña es muy malo. Malo chance de disposito. Sí. Gracias. Well, how bad is it? He says he may be able to save your baby. I don't care about the baby. What about Beth? She's weakening. Lo siento mucho, señor. It's my fault. It's my fault she fell. It would have happened in any event. Why? Because of the size and the position of the baby. Now, there's a lot of technical terminology. But what it all comes to is that there's a slim chance of a normal delivery in such cases. Well, then what do they do? They just mark it off as hopeless? He'll do all he can. Oh. <laughs> now, you tell him to take Beth's baby. Oh. I can't do that, Ben. What do you mean you can't do that? I can't do it. Why? Why not? Because I'm a priest. And he's a doctor dedicated to saving lives. Well, I'm asking him to save Beth's life. Even if he were willing, I wouldn't let him. Why? Why? Because you want to die. Get out of here, Ben, and leave me alone. Beth, you have to understand how he feels. He's weighing your life against that of an unborn child. Baby hasn't even taken a breath yet. When does life start? 
Life started for my baby when I first felt him inside of me. It was a spark of life that I was responsible for igniting. Sometimes I wish I could have snuffed it out. But it kept growing and moving. It was a part of me. And sometimes at night, when it was very still and lonely, I lay awake and I can hear a heartbeat. And I talk to him. He's alive, Ben. Beth, you're alive, and I'm going to do everything in my power to keep you that way. I know how you feel about this baby. I'd feel the same way if that was my own baby. But that's the reason I came after you. And that's the only reason. If we can have other children. I mean, I fool about a lot of things, Ben, but not about this. When I look back on my life, it doesn't add up to very much. But think about the wonderful things that the baby can become. The wonderful things that he might do. He's got to have his chance. Stand by and watch her die. Now you tell him to get started. You're not, not acting as a priest now, just a translator. The decision is mine. If you can't create life, Ben, you have no right to destroy it. You can't make the decision. Hey, Mike. Mike, no, I need a doctor. Ben, I want to live now. I want very much to live. But not with the thought that I bought my life with my babies. the doctor with Nora, Michael. I'm an asshole. And how can I explain the things I said to you the other night? If I'd known how you felt about me then, I didn't tell you because. It was too soon. I, I... I didn't figure you could feel anything for another man so soon. After all that's happened and after all the things I've done and I've said. <sighs> well, I love you. You know, I've loved you for a long time. I just figured I didn't have a chance. Maybe I should have told you anyhow. Well, maybe I wasn't ready for you then. And now that I am, maybe it's too late. From the looks on your faces, I have a feeling I better be making my peace with heaven. No false cheer, if you please. Would you hand me Julie's prayer book? Michael. Since we'll soon be part in company, I have a piece of advice I'd like to give you. 
If it's to break with the past, you try and make it swift and clean. Otherwise, you'll bring pain and misery to yourself and others for as long as you live. Lo siento mucho. I am so sorry, senorita. Say anything. Please don't say anything kind. I never intended to hurt you. Go into her, please go into her. Courage to paint stouts, and more courage to dissolve them. But what you have in the end is, is stronger because of them. So your dark journey is ended. <laughs> no. It wasn't all dark. Times with you and Julie, warmth, understanding. They've given me a new life. Michael and I have talked the night away. Would you push back the canvas a bit, please? I, I'd like to see the sunrise. It will be a fine day. A soft day. Time to be born and a time to die. Life forever renewing itself. What a wonderful miracle it is. Do you remember the old blessing, child? May the roads rise with you and the wind. Always at your back. May the good Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand.
it to the mission. My bishop is a very wise man. He said a change of scene would, uh, would help me see things more clearly. Now I do. You see, Julie, I, I accepted all the joys and richness of the priesthood. But I ran from the pain. From the responsibility of decisions a priest has to make. I want you to know I'm sorry. You had troubles enough without my burdening you with my silly schoolgirl notions. I told you that's all it was. No, by all that's holy, that's not all it was. Love isn't something that you can put on and, and take off like, like a coat. Maybe it's wrong, but I do love you. And I'll never love anyone again in quite the same way. No two loves are ever quite the same. Because no two people are ever quite the same. I'll never see you again. Or know where you are. Or how you are. Remember what St. Augustine said. He that is often far distant from thee in body is united to thee because he loves what you love. Son of yours has a lot of lung power. He's not my son, and you know that. He will be if you're a father to him. A man named Harden picked a boy up out of the dust one day and raised him like a son. What is it they feel for each other, Ben? You wanted to be like him. Well, now's your chance. By giving this boy what that man gave you. And one day, you'll feel for him what Harden feels for you. And one day, that boy's gonna think you're as, as tall as a mountain. I'll bet you preach a whale of a sermon. Come in here one sometime. We might do just that. Good luck, Mike. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. 